guys doing today? It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. If you've come here to the live, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. If you're here in the replay, you're going to love this lesson. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hello. He tracks me with cameras and uh, I don't know. Am I not on? Oh, okay. Are you not on? Maybe you hear him, maybe you don't. He tracks you with cameras. He sometimes talks to you and he reads comments. Today is going to be about how to paint lava. This was brought to us by Brooklyn, community member Brooklyn. Thank you, Brooklyn. She actually hooked me up with some photographer friends of hers. And so we're actually getting to do some stuff from Lava Light Galleries, which if you collect photography at all, your jaw just hit the ground. Now, I really want to stay right at the beginning. This is for educational purposes only. And so when you're learning, you know, we're doing along with this photograph, realize that this is just for your personal enjoyment, not to be at your local craft fair or art show. This is just to show you how to paint lava. And Nick Selway was kind enough to share some of his hard-won research and art with us. Because let me tell you, it was those two things to get this photograph. You want to show them the photograph, John? <clears throat> so... I cannot say enough about these two photographers that make up this gallery. Um, I think the thing I was most excited about was that I learned you could take a tour with them and they would show you how they got these pictures. Now we do enough photography here in the studio where we know that even knowing how to get that picture, how to get that exposure is its own journey. Isn't that true, John? Yeah. I mean, the, these pictures that they get. This isn't just that they, you know, stuck a total photo lens on there and like they were hoping. There was some stuff there. There's some amazing things. I am going to show you how to paint that one that you just saw today. I'm going to be painting that. You can go to their gallery. And what I'd love you to do is in the comments below, after the show is over, besides like commenting and subscribing, I would love you to put in the comments what your favorite image is from them because I have been invited to paint more. You're gonna just completely blow your minds. And also if you're looking to collect a photograph from these guys, collect it. Are you just off mic? Okay. You guys don't get to hear from John maybe, today. Maybe and not that wasn't today. necessary. That's, you just don't need me today. Oh wait, no, that, that, that may be back now. All right, so I'm gonna do this kind of in a one stroke style. I mean, not one stroke, um, that was crazy. In a daily painter style, which means I'm gonna put this up real fast. I'm putting out a little quinacridone and a little um, ultramarine blue and then some white. And that's kind of how I think I'm gonna sort of put in my sky. I feel like that's what I will be doing. Yeah. Mostly. I found my microphone button. It Did was, you find it? It was missing. Was it missing? <laughs> I'm actually going to, um, in this picture, unusually use black. Yeah. And I'm also going to put out some phthalo green. And I may grab other colors as we go. The other colors, the ones for the liquid hot magma, right, are going to be your cad light and cad medium, cad mm -hmm. reds. Also, I have cad yellow medium and I have cadmium orange. I like the cadmiums for the lava. Oh, yeah. That's a preference that I have. It's something that I enjoy. While you're over there looking for your brushes, I'm going to give a okay. big shout out Number to 12. all our friends and, and moderators in the room. And I see Mr. Todd Graham hunting around in there. Is Mr. Famous Todd Graham here? He is. He's famous. And our, and our wonderful moderators, we've got Alan and Ghost Hostess and Flame. And I thought I saw Kim here earlier. So, so, so many people here with us. It's really nice. Um, Oh my gosh, over 220 people here. It's we had some other news, and it relates to the after show. I'm just going to do this horizontally. I've mixed a little of the quinacridone red with a small amount of ultramarine, and I'm just going back and forth with horizontal brush strokes, pulling up the canvas. I'm not using even a blending medium or anything. Interestingly enough, I'm going to pull out yeah. some of my ultramarine blue and just pick up my white here so we're and I'm going to do a wet into wet blend as I come up the canvas with my ultramarine and you're just doing that just by blending the two there with just the canvas moisture. if we put the photograph up fast I'm gonna talk about a couple of things even though we're talking about lava today I want to talk about the photograph so you guys always ask me how do I decide what to paint first we're on a Mac Shh. 
What? <laughs> I, said, I said, we're on a Mac. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Everyone knows because they can tell. Oh, okay. So if you look, what's the furthest thing away that you can see? The furthest, furthest thing away in that photograph that you can see? Uh, the sky? Sky. The background sky. The atmosphere sky. Yeah. Right? So the first thing that I have to figure out how to paint is that background. That's before the clouds even, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess so. And as I go up, right, I'm going to add a little more ultramarine pigment to my brush so that as I pull this up, it gets a little darker as it goes up. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm doing. That so. is how you get that first layer. That's how I determine what's first. It's really, really just that mellow. And I'm going to get a nice, stiff round. You see this right here? We do. So this is a stiffer bristle. Sometimes you could, this isn't bristle, this is actually filament. Bristle is from hog's hair. But I'm going to use this just to start laying in my clouds. Okay. Right? And my clouds are going to be a fairly dark purple with just a smidge of black in them. I'll get a little white to lighten it up. I'm just looking for this great dark color. I want it to be fairly dry. And I'm just going to put in some of this, here I'll get out of the way of the up close camera, just light dusting of these as I look at them. Clouds. Clouds. A lot of times when people think that they want to paint clouds, they think that they want to paint light colors. Yeah. Because they think, oh, a cloud is white. They think symbolically, not factually. What, what do you mean? Well, the symbolism of a cloud is a white, fluffy little cotton ball. Well, yeah. It's but a real cloud is, you know, a collection of mist with light shining through it. So a bunch of it will always be in shadow. Gotcha. So if you don't get your shadows in on your clouds, your clouds will never look like clouds. That's what you're working from there. I'm right, I'm right now, I'm putting in my dark portions of my clouds. Gotcha. I'm using the, the picture as a reference. I'm not going to be real crazy about this. I'm using a drier brush. You know, I could also have grayed this out with contrast, but today we're going to be using a strong amount of black in the mix. And I'm just going to... Now, one of the things that will happen is I'm pushing my brush in. Yeah. Is I'm letting the paint underneath show through. Yeah. Yeah, and I am letting some of the paint even pick up into this because I'm trying to make sure that I've got that there. Now, uh, Do we have any questions yeah, was, about these clouds? I was just going to ask, what, uh, let's so, uh, I'm going to scroll, slide up there. I think it's Karen. Hi, Karen. Says, what is the best method to create clouds on canvas? Is there a best method? A best method. Hmm. My honest, okay, so there's technique-based be methods, right? Where somebody has a brush that's designed to do something specifically, like this brush. But can you show us that brush on that camera? Just yeah, it up right so here. Do you see this brush? Oh, we can a little bit. That's it's got. So it's got look kind of like a flayed. Yeah, it's got these little flays, right? Like and so I could come here with these little flays. And I'm gonna zoom and really I can in on that. Use this really easily. This is actually for decorative flowers. It's real interesting for when you're stippling and stuff. So that's one that you can do. Here's another one. These are super popular for this. It's like oh, you have to, you'll have to bunny hand. There you go. What is what is that thing called? I don't. I, uh, it is called the loop. The loop. The loop. Right. So I load this up. This is a great cloud maker. Okay. Right. And I just scrumble along with my little loop. And its shape kind of wants to make those clouds. Can, can, right there. Can you just hold that brush still for a second? Yeah. So, oh, so it is loops of... Yeah, it's like the bristles. It was like a detail round that got flipped over and taped over. You could probably make it at home a similar way. Interesting. So see how I can just sort of scrumble on these clouds? So these are um, all, these are all technique-based. These, well, or, no, no. Or brush-based? Yeah, these are based in the brush, right? Uh -huh. Another thing I could do, which, of course, I didn't pull out, was have, like, a... A glazing medium or a blending medium 
or any of that. And if I'm allowed to run off camera and run back on, I can grab one. No running. Okay, you can run off camera. Can I run off camera just real quick? I can't believe I forgot that. So while, while you're while you're looking uh, over there. At nothing. No, I'm going to look over there. Don't right tell there. anyone that we did this. I, I'm over here looking at the camera, actually, at, the, at what you've already done. We're going to zoom out a little bit. We don't want the. All and right. Then so. We'll come over here and take a look at. One glazing medium dries super fast. And see, this is me okay. killing time while we're Sorry, on so we're going to talk show. about these two things, back. right, which are not the same product, even though they say glazing medium. This one dries real fast yeah. in thin translucent glazes. And this one dries real slow in thin translucent glazes. This one you can keep, you know, you can add just a tint of pigment to. This one, there's actually a percentage mix before it stops letting your paint dry. Interesting. Right. So for this, I might be more inclined to do the fast drying glazes, which is the Liquitex glazing medium. Okay. Right. And then I can come here and I can also do this and it will it will give me more of that oil effect. See how I'm doing this here? Oh, it all blend it, it, and then it's super blendy. Then it's just super blendy. So the correct way to really deal with clouds is to treat them like any object that exists in your painting. Okay. Not a technique-based solution as much as, say, a um, solution of shading. Look at the shape, look at the shading, and just try to duplicate those things. Oh. If you want to paint clouds like Tim Gagnon, right, for those of you guys that know him, he well, that is that's not a that's not a brush stroke. That's actually just painting. Ah, right. He's just painting the clouds, and we use these different tools and mediums. Somebody asked me what was the best medium for this, and they really thought it would be oils. But because of all these different glazes, and mediums and products that we have now, right? Yeah, we don't have to worry about that the way that we used to in acrylics. We can pretty much do any technique from watercolor to oil techniques now in acrylics. They mm. are an incredibly versatile medium. So I'm doing the glazing here, and I'm going to come up and finish some sky up here real fast. Cool. While you're doing that, I'm going I'm to say thank you, everyone, for showing up. We have two, over 260, 270 people here in the room with us today. And it's been really awesome. There's been lots of chatting. Our moderators are doing a great job keeping keeping all the questions answered and helping everybody out. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Know, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and give us a thumbs up. Those thumbs up really help us. Oh, yeah, uh, and we're going for 300, we, right? Oh, yeah, we love to try to hit 300 before the end of the episode. That's great because then we get to do our Sherpa dance. I have and, a new uh, 300 I'm going for. You have a new 300? Okay, so it's 300 people in the room. Yeah, well, we're close there. Right? 300 likes on the like meter. Yeah. And then 300 subs in one day. And when that happens, Ooh. you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to paint and create the Sherpa 300 poster. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to do it. We're going to dine in lubies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's only funny if you're in the South. Yeah. So So I'm just trying to kind of like pay attention to that, make sure that I have some nice atmosphere in my sky. Maybe no, we, like down here I kind of you, you have some wishes there on the canvas. I there. do. The, I have it? one for Brenda. Her eyes are going through a lot. Yeah. And so that was the wish I just kind of put in today, even though today was like about lava. Today, today was a lesson. It was really about lava. You just snuck a wish in there for us. Yeah, I just saw that and it spoke to me, so I did. So see, see, I've just got these little clouds sort of in. And now, for those of you who join us, normally we we like to put wishes in our canvas on painting days, and we just sometimes we try to sneak them in there when we can. We and just, that's yeah, what you see in there. Just makes us happy. So see this nice little sort of dusty sky that I've got going, and I don't need to just do too much about that. I think I'm really coming to the end of it. And so I'm going to now lay in my rocks in my ocean. Well, can we let can we let Flame let the cat out of the bag? Yeah, Flame can let the cat out of the she bag. She'll let it in. She's gonna she's gonna announce in the chat what the secret is, and then. But you guys got to come after because you could. Because just the people in the chat get to know right now. Just the people in the chat get to know. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people have already figured it they, out. We'll tell. Well, towards the end of the episode, we'll. It kind of I kind of like blew my mind. I'm like, people are already figuring this out. We'll let we'll let the. <laughs> so I'm Ghost. taking some ultramarine blue over to my thalo green, and I'm even going to gray it out here with a little black. 
which you're going to notice doesn't do what you expect it to do. It, it actually makes quite a lovely deep ocean color. You, you know what? You and know I'm what? going to um, come in and, and make sure that I've got some nice oceaniness coming in. Well, you, you know what Ghost just said? What did Ghost just say? Release the Kraken! <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm not saying she's wrong. So I'm going to just pull this first layer, this deep kind of layer here. All right, I'm going to pull this across my horizon line because even if I have waves coming in, somewhere far off in the distance, the water is level. Oh, yeah. All right. right. So that's the next thing I have to paint in, right? I have to paint in this water. Mm -hmm. This is how I create that first illusion of anything on my canvas. That's how I do it. It's how we do... We're just going to throw this in real fast. The lava part's the fun part. Lava is not hard. So I feel like there's some objects in art that people feel are hard, but it's an emotional hardness, not a, not a mm -hmm. functional hardness. Like smoke, fire, glass, water. Ah. They're just not sure how to represent those in paint. <clears throat> And so it stumps them, but the, it's not actually that hard to to hit that. So I'm going to put a little ultramarine into my black, and I'm going to pick up some white here. Make this sort of deep gray green rock. And coming before this above my horizon line, I'm going to plant this far off rock. Let me look at that far off rock. I'm going to plant that far off rock. It looks fairly planted. I'm going to plant it, and we know it's far away from a very important visual cue. That it's small? It's a gray. Oh. Things that are far away in the distance in our pictures are gray. I was going to actually just pre-paint this and show the, um, the lava part, but then I thought you guys might enjoy seeing how we would work from a, um, a photograph. I had this weird idea you all would dig it. Yeah. But I don't know if y'all dig it. I'm going to pull some pure black. Just I still want it gray, but I'm going to blend that along the top edge. See, it's just blending in nicely. Just pulling that down. Still telling that distant story, just deepening <laughs> it up. What? I'm watching the jokes in chat right now. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Y'all yeah, think you're so funny. They are very funny. They are very funny. I am totally getting a kick out of it. Now I'm going to come here, paying attention to the, the shape that I have right here. And I'm going to put in this next closer rock. And it's brighter, so we definitely know it's closer. Pull that down. Gives us a place to drop some lava off. The black lava rock. The black lava. I haven't rinsed my brush. That's actually pretty helpful. So this rock is darker than the one back there. I'm also going to take a little black and blue and pull some beach right here. And it's still in that color, but I let it sweep back and forth. Can you see the sweep, John? Yeah, I think so. All right, so that is an interesting little way that I do that, because I'm looking for that next layer. Show them the photograph again. That one? Yeah. Okay. So we're just kind of generally talking about this. Generally. When I say generally, I mean generally because I've only got a small picture I can pull from. Because <laughs> they have great uh, photo protection on their site. I'm going to add a little black, blue, and white to this next little brush stroke because I pull this one closer because I want this one to kind of really show. In the preview, words are over some information that I need, so I'm going to have to guess, which is always super scary. Grab a little white. Oh, there it goes. And I'm going to put some little sea foam coming up this beach. Like you do. Mm -hmm. You were like, do I? I don't know. I didn't know I did. Yes, like you do. Like you do. Like you do. Oh, there we go. Just now I can see it. I Yay. See the foam. I see the foam. Oh, goodness. And then my hat got in the way. <laughs> All right. So we're just, just going to talk about that just a little bit. Those are some dark rocks. Oh, yeah. They're jet black. 
That's jet one of the key rock. things about lava is that you will have a lot of jet black in all of your magma art. I'm going to adjust the camera. In fact, it won't feel like lava if you leave the black out. Won't look like lava on a brown rock. Okay. Just enjoying, just putting a little bit of white here. I'm going to do a cool thing with my, um. There we go. I'm going to get a number six bright, and I'm going to just get some water going, like I've been wanting. Just some water going. We're going to just pull that back. Just blowing that in. I'm creating those little shadings of the water. Pulling just the green and ultramarine in. These are all very dark colors because this is dusk mm -hmm. and the ocean is actually fairly reflective of sky and light around it. You can even come in and pull some black right into that ocean which is just shocking. I'll put a little shadow there. It's looking so cool. It does. It comes in real fast is what it is. It comes in real fast. You're just doing, if you were doing a daily painting, what you'd want to do is as quick as you could just talk, say everything that was important about this painting. This won't actually take us that long without, um, you know, missing it. So I think that smoke is the last that's going to go. I'm going to pull a little more white onto my brush. And I'm going to add into the ocean some of this foaming water. <laughs> and, uh, you know, thank you guys for all coming and hanging out with us. It's been yeah. really awesome. We've got like 270, 275 people out here hanging out with us. It's been really cool. Learning the liquid hot magma running up on a beach. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. And and please do like, comment, just share, and especially give us those little thumbs up down there. That really helps. Uh, yeah, uh, lets everyone know that you know you guys were here. Lets YouTube know that you liked, you saw what you liked, what you saw, and it helps us. It does. It, it really does, does really actually help like, us. So, you know, give us a thumbs up, you know, leave a comment and hang out with us. Oh, post a picture. We want to see your pictures. Yeah, we love seeing the pictures. Post them up on the Facebook page, post them up on Twitter, Pin Pinterest. Pinterest. All right. So, see how we've got some nice little oceany stuff happening here? Mm hmm. We talked about some sea foam. Trying to, you know, have some fun. One of the fun things I can do now. What can you do now? I can take. Hopefully I can do this. I don't believe you. Can you push that, that palette? I, I need you to pull the picture up big and zoom in on the rocks for me. Uh, I'm literally painting blind here. Just <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. It's really challenging. It's like, it's no, I'm, I'm not because John Bramblett is actually literally doing that. But I'm not that cool. Let's see if we can pull that up. I'm, I'm looking to see if we can pull it up. I'm loading a palette knife. Just, ooh. That is tough to see. We're going to have to come up with a new viewing screen. All right, I'm going to just fake it till I make it. <laughs> Let's see. These are the rocks you're looking for down here? Um, better. I just need to see some of the... I'm going to come across the top very lightly uh, using the edge of my knife and see how I'm getting that rough scrape. Yeah. I'm going to come here. Look, I'm making rock. Oh, yeah. Those are really popping right out. That is not in the photograph. You are really having to yeah. to reach for that there. I am. That's like you're painting from rock memory. Well, I'm half into. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> there's, there's some of that going on. I'm going to come back with my pure black and make sure I've got some of that happening here on this rock. Now your mom has got some rock skills, too. Yeah. So we're just 
Use, I'm using the knife, and you can see I'm loading on the left-hand side mm -hmm. because I'm stroking right. And I'm just allowing that to talk about the rockness of what's happening a little bit in a way that makes that uh, enjoyable and fun. Yeah. Telling that rock story there. Now, do you ever paint the sides of your canvases? Yes. And it's And that's okay? Um, it's always okay. I do it when I'm on a true gallery wrap canvas, and I'm going to have an object up for sale. Okay, so what's a gallery wrap canvas? Um, well, a gallery wrap canvas is any canvas that the staples are on the back instead of on the sides. However, it used to be that they were really thick stretcher bars, so that when you painted or stretched your art around the sides, it was like the whole painting was complete. It didn't require a frame, nothing interfered with the art, and it was a really great way for artists to produce large, substantial pieces and not deal with crushing framing expenses. Gotcha. So you can just like hang one of those on the wall. Yeah, but almost every canvas now is, is stapled on the back, so you can, you can paint around the edges of any canvas. Okay. And that's, there's no problem with that. That'll be no, fine. No, there's no problem. Somebody gives you a problem, send them to me. <laughs> the Sherpa. I, I would. I would totally be like, hey. You can paint on your canvases anywhere you want. Don't tell people what to do. You can't box me into the front of my canvas. <laughs> so I've got a couple rocks happening here. And I have this little, now I've got this little seascape sort of afoot, like you do. So if you were horrible with a palette knife, what would you do here? I would just do a dry brush. You dry brush this technique? I would dry brush this. Okay. I would go like, I would pull up some white paint like this. Okay. Bead on the edge of the brush. And I would come in just. Oh, you would palette knife fake it. I palette knife fake it all the time. Oh, that's. People all the time would be like, is that palette knife? No, it's brush work. I got too lazy to pull out the knife. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you would think it's palette My mom gets so annoyed at that. <laughs> So, what, what size canvas is this? This is just a little 8x10 canvas. When you do a daily painting, my whole recommendation is to take your size down to an 8x10. Really, really, really recommend taking your size down to an 8x10. I'm yeah. going to dry this real quick because the lava and the smoke are going to come in real fast. Mm. We did a painting today, just for fun. <laughs> okay. Well, I uh, said I would do that, but then I lied. Wah, 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 wah. I hope... Oh, it's so unplugged. It's so unplugged. It's Watch so it. unplugged. And you know what? With a new studio. Can you plug me in? I, you know, I'm going to come over and plug it in. Because I have to disappear. This is the episode of Big Art Quest where I'm hardly ever on camera. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm so excited. Remember to go to Lava Light Galleries. I want you to look through all the photographs and tell me what your favorite, favorite image that CJ Plummer and Nick Selway have. Because I think they're amazing. If you're collecting photography... Definitely look at them. I think that actually, I think that they're some of the most amazing photographers on the web and um, well, in the world. I just know them from the web because I don't live in Hawaii. Hi, John. So, what is it you need plugged in? <laughs> I hope you're going <laughs> to. Okay, so I can turn that down now so you don't have to listen to that. Sorry. I had, I was, I was over there helping her out plug things in. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm back. He's so funny. You're a really funny dude. I'm, I'm just hanging out here. You're a really funny dude. <laughs> Aren't you? Aren't you a little funny dude? I don't know. Aren't you? All right. So colors that I would re like ideal perfectly. Mm -hmm. Um... I would actually do CAD red light. So, will CAD we'll medium or dark? Because yes, it's a difference. <laughs> so Sly had a question here. CAD yellow, yeah. Will absorbent grounds work for non-archival spray inks, like it does for some watered down acrylic? Yes. Yeah, it stabilizes it. And then if you're, you should seal varnish it on top with a spray varnish, then yeah, you're good. Cool. Now, sometimes they mean non-archival because they're saying that they'll fade. Right. And that, I've got some orange here. Some cadmium orange. No, I don't. <laughs> no, 
I don't have it. You have a dried tube of cadmium orange. I have a plugged tube, that's for sure. Don't, don't. All right. Do I need to come over and unplug? No, I got it. There we go. <laughs> plugged tube of cadmium orange. That's what my pencils are for. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get a small detail brush. And if you observe this lava, this liquid hot magma. Liquid hot right? magma. Liquid hot magma. You can zoom out a little bit and I'll figure out my magma flow. Your hat's in the way. So the thing mm-hmm. about magma is it flows down quite a lot like water. In the first color, the first thing that you want to do on your liquid hot magma. John is not zooming out on. <laughs> Which one? Oh, over here? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know what you were talking about. Sorry. You know, is it's flowed down the rock, right? That one? Yeah, you want to show the flow down the rock. Because that's what it's doing, it's flowing down the rock into the water. Maybe it's pulling as it goes down. This is a lot like hitting a waterfall. Right? So that's all you're doing. So first is your darkest color. On keyboard. Maybe it's only there. Now you can also add to the flow. I mean, you could you could say that the tube is coming out, and then far off we've got this little spot over here happening. Now, would vermilion work well with lava? So what I'll say for lava is, on any of your reds or oranges, what you want is a you want a very hot color. So you don't want it to run to the blue, you want it to run to the orange. So I think Peril, I think the orange vermilions, I think any of those hot, warm reds will totally jam for you. Okay. I'm going to grab my CAD a light here. I'm going to just make sure that I've got a pop of that CAD light in my lava flow. See, it shows up important. You don't think it's important, but then it's important. So Lynn's wondering that if there's a substitution for the CAD orange, because that's the only thing she doesn't have. Yeah, it makes uh, CAD yellow and CAD red. It's What it is, is um, so sometimes you can mix all, some colors, like, you know, you could obviously use CAD yellow light and CAD medium to make CAD orange. Mm-hmm. Um, or a really close approximation with CAD yellow medium and CAD yellow medium, CAD red medium and CAD yellow medium. And you can do all of this in hue. You can switch it over to the perils. Um, the orange is a convenience because it was mixed at a professional factory and the saturation of the pigment is really high and I can use that in my advantage. Is it necessary? No, 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 not at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just fun. Well, I'm gonna no hit. pressure on you. Don't ever worry about that stuff. I will always tell you what I'm using so that you are, you know, getting kind of like the, the truthy truths out of me. The true truths. <laughs> well, funny. I'm having a Russell Brand moment. We're getting close to the, to, we're getting that, that, that close to those 300 numbers in here. So I'm, no I'm getting excited. So if you guys like, comment, share, like, comment, share. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up because as soon as we get 300 of those, we make the Sherpa dance. And uh, we love to see all that. It really helps in here. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, uh, thank you guys for having and hanging out. Don't forget to post your pictures on on the website and on the Facebook page and Twitter and Pinterest. And pretty much anywhere you can, we'll come find them. We want to see them. So Uh, I'm going to add another layer of light colors. Everything he said is true. And what you need to realize is the hotter the... um, the molten rock is the lighter. Oh yeah. And then as it cools, it darkens and then it becomes black. So things you just want to have on a lava flow, by the way, this totally informs you on how you might want to paint a Phoenix. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just, just does. I'm going to get some just yellow now and I'm going to add that on my little lava flow. And, but not everywhere. This is where the fire is hot. So, you know, fire's never hot everywhere, or things have gone really wrong, and you should run away very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you remember that little secret that we, that we, that, that, uh, Flame t- 
co- let, let in the in the, in the did chat. Did she let it out? She did. It's it's everyone loves it. They think it's great. So oh, I mean, is there no, is there any point for us to all meet we're, up we're, over at the yeah, other video? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're gonna, <laughs> that's uh, what you know. I'm gonna grab that loop again because I had some fun with that loop. Yeah. Which is the brush, that is um, I guess uh, like that. Right where? There or up or down? Does it have a focusing? I don't think oh, this wait, one has no, the this focusing. One You're right. Just How about I go right here? That one does. There you go. That one has magic focusing. Okay. See, it's, this is just a looped over round. You could do this with a really inexpensive brush and tape. Yeah. But I, the brush guys carry this one, the loop. And oh, really? I don't, they're not like crazy pricey. Oh, I was right. We have that. You're going to be you're going to be revealing that brush here in the next yeah, soon I know. time. Well, you just like took so long to reveal. <laughs> Took so long. So you can get that brush at the brush guys. Yeah, you can totally get that brush at the brush guys. We like those guys a lot. Bring over ultramarine blue. I so felt like I did. Sherpa should do a phoenix. I should do a phoenix. You I should agree. do a phoenix. Actually, yeah, I think that there's some definite phoenix stuff. Well, happening. you know, I feel like I want to do a, like Pele, and I want to do like a, a really good phoenix. I like doing fire. They had a these guys had a picture of a tree with a fire next to it and a really incredible sky. I'm mixing some ultramarine blue and black. I'm getting a lot of it into my white, I'm coming over my glazing medium. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do the very important part of putting up the smoke. Because, well, it's not really smoke, it's steam. When the lava hits the ocean, and you can't miss this part, this part matters, you need to have this sort of clouded smoke. It's what tells the viewer the rest of the story. And if this part is missing, even though people are not that informed on lava, believe it or not, a tremendous amount of their brain will understand that they're missing something. Oops. So I'm just using this just for fun, because I'm have i getting to play with it and deciding what I think of it. And I want to make sure that I've got, like, there's some smoke here it, that comes up. I'm using a glazing medium to keep it kind of thin. Some smoke coming up here. Like that. A little smoke coming up there. And then some nice, some nice smoke. So you know what I love? I love that these guys went out on the island and photographed this. And I did not have to figure out how to get near the volcano. Because <laughs> that would freak me out. Just no end. Look, I'm just going to make a little smoke trail up. You guys see these little smoke trails? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to come and get just white. Now you could use zinc white because that's translucent. And I'm going to make sure that I'm catching the highlights that I need to have on this smoke. Because smoke is highlights and lowlights. You're like, smoke is like my hair? Yes, smoke is like your hair. If you're coloring your hair. So yeah, we now have some smoke there. Some of my favorite famous paintings are of Krakatoa. Oh, yeah. That had um, gone. We may do some where artists saw the eruption and it changed the color of their sky and they all painted it. A little smoke up here. Now I have a little lava. What do you all think of my little lava? That's so cool. Look, lava. Daily paint. I don't even know how long it took us to do that. Not that long. Daily paint. So good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have a little so lava nice. painting. <laughs> Check out Lava Light Galleries. Check out Lava Light Galleries. While John checks out <laughs> who took what from Luna. Hopefully they didn't take her uh, marshmallow because she takes that super seriously. Um, we are in the comments below. Really tell me what your favorite photograph is from them. Um, I'm going to do I think just even for fun I'm gonna take one of my favorites and like paint it um, again remember that these are for your personal education it wouldn't be like paint this and then sell 20 of them at a thing a lot of times you can work with photographers like mm -hmm. this and they'll give you the right to paint it for your own instruction which is like incredible as they've done here go pick out your favorite picture tell me what it was in the comments below go check out their website if any of you does the tour they have like a tour where they show you how to take these pictures tell me because i want to go on that tour now there's gonna be an after show there's an after show at 12 45 
So I'm like, which is now not even that big of a surprise, except you could win something. So you should probably come back. Yeah. Did this explain lava? I, I think so. I think you guys it, get that? It's darker on the outside, gets hotter, yeah, gets that, brighter where it's hotter, runs down the rock like waterfall, unless it does that little psh, firework thingy. Yeah. Now you'll. Uh, I'm, we're going to talk about lava more. Great. Now, now, it's I, just like one of those fun things. And, and look, yeah. we covered some smoke, we covered some clouds, we covered how do you paint a photograph. You paint in the order you can see objects in the picture. Furthest back is your first thing, and then as. You figure out what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next, and you can always build a photograph. Now, if you, will you go over some of those brushes that you, you were using there again in the after show? Yeah. Okay, great. Answer any of those questions you want to see in those brushes. Plus, we're going to have gonna, that really cool brush video that John let, has been editing from the space. That's right. We're going to let the cat out of the bag. And we're going to let a cat out of the bag. So we'll see you like in a few minutes. In just a few minutes. Oh, I get to do sippy sippy from Dad. Do you? you yeah, do I'm still sippy, there. Sippy. I'm still holding on, guys. Just... <sighs> Really, gotta be healthy for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I need a healthy donut. Work you, on that. <laughs> you need a healthy donut. Like one that that's nutritionally dense, but yet super tasty, like white flour and sprinkles. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I need one of those. Work on it. All right. We'll, we'll see, see you back in a few we'll, minutes. We'll, we'll put a link up in the description. See you guys in a bit. Right, bye. Come join us live Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central or enjoy one of the hundreds of paintings available on replay anytime.